Hey guys, Josh Happy Little Landscapes. 16 by 20 inch Bob Ross today, season 24, episode one. I redid it again because that first one sold and this one came out even better. Look at this, look at this sucker. So if you want to learn how to paint this and get the tips and tricks you need to be able to paint it just like this, get your brushes out, get your colors out. I'm going to tell you what colors we need, what brushes we need, and we're going to get going just like this. Hey, back again. My precious wife and her new YouTube channel, okay? Follow her. I'll put the details in the description, okay? We're going to redo uh, one of our Bob Ross paintings that we did that just sold. I'll put up a picture. Okay, saw the picture, except today we're going to use a few different colors out of that Magic Fly set that I got for Christmas. Uh, mainly we got, uh, let's just start over here, we got the purple, got the sap green, this emerald green, this kind of neon green, those are going to be our tree colors. Van Dyke brown, which is the darker color brown out of the two, the darker color one. Lizard and Crimson, Prussian Blue, Midnight Black, Titanium White, my four favorite colors right here. Uh, bright red, Ooh, look at that. Bright red, uh, yellow ochre, Indian yellow. These are out of the Bob Ross set. And then I've got this pink. I love that pink in the last video that I did that you guys saw on Tuesday, I think it was. So we're gonna use that pink in some of the bushes down around the bottom, okay? So for right now, we got our 16 by 20 canvas. It's got Bob Ross liquid white on it, okay? Might be hard to see with the reflection of the light. You just wanna put a very thin coat, okay? Very thin, I, I maybe dipped you know, I have my little tin. You can watch my video on how I put the liquid white on, okay? If you, if you go watch that video, then come back to this video. You'll have a nice wet canvas, right? Nice and slick. And then we can put our wet oil paints on top of the wet. Wet on wet, right? Almost touch that sucker right there. Okay, so why don't we do our Bob Ross one inch brush, the blender brush. Don't have to have the Bob Ross one, but I do, I got the set. Uh, and then we'll use our two inch brush, palette knife, couple fan brushes, pretty much, and maybe a liner brush, pretty much all we're gonna need, okay? So for this one, we're gonna go right into the Indian yellow. I'm gonna snag a bit of the white right into the Indian yellow so it's nice and bright yellow, okay? We're gonna come down here. We're gonna have these reflections in the water and then up into our sky as well. And maybe a little bit more of that white. We'll come up here into the sky. Alright, got this nice bright, very bright yellow color. Make it, you can make it a little bit brighter by putting the, the white in there, okay? Then we're going to go into our yellow ochre, just like Bob does, right into the yellow ochre, and that's going to create this nice kind of goldish color, okay? Again, we're going to reflect that down the bottom since we always forget to do it at the same time that we're painting it, right? We're gonna reflect that down. We're not really blending anything out. We're just kind of leaving it nice and splotchy and, and yellow, okay? We got this kind of gold hue over the top of our very bright Indian yellow, right? Put it nice and bright on there, okay? Then we're gonna go right into our bright red, right? A Little bit on the end of the brush. Don't need a lot, haven't washed the brushes yet, okay? We're gonna come up in here. Ooh, this stuff will set your world on fire. So you don't need a lot, okay? But the last time we painted it, I don't think we used enough, so it wasn't as bright red as I wanted it to be. You know, according to what Bob had up there, his was very bright red. Okay, so we're gonna do our bright red. We might as well just cover the, cover the canvas with the bright red. All right, cover the sides. We want to finish our sides, guys, right? Get this super red sky up here, okay? And then we're going to go down. We're going to take the red right into the bottom. Just like so. Okay, just like Bob did. Cover the sides. Cover the sides. All right, let's get some of that yellow with the orange and that. Indian yellow and the yellow ochre, right? Just kind of cover those edges that we missed over here. Kind of bring it all together. Okay, got this very bright, very bright painting so far, okay? Indian yellow, yellow ochre, red, okay? Then we're gonna go into our crimson and our blue and just mix them kind of right there on the brush. 
right? Get it on both sides of the brush. And then we're going to come up here and just make our, ooh, that's pervy right up there. Going to color over the sides. All right, going to go all the way across the top. So for that, I'm going to have to kind of float my canvas. I'm going to finish the top edge with this purpley color that we've created with our crimson and our blue, right? And we want the corners to be darker. And while we got that on the brush, when we come down here, we'll just finish off the bottom. And sit the sucker up on there. Damn easel. It's got this lip on the bottom, and a lot of times I'll forget to kind of cover that bottom lip. Okay. Get her back in. And if you have your even coat of liquid white, you'll get these thick oil paints to blend together. All right, where you get this nice soft lines in between. If you're not, if you're on a dry canvas, it's gonna be very hard lines between your yellow and yellow and red and purple because it won't blend. That liquid white lets everything blend together. And let's make it a little bit purplier down here. You can see how we're kind of making this little U shape. Not very pronounced, but enough. I'm gonna take our one inch brush. Uh, we had our one inch brush. We're gonna take our two inch brush. And go right into the middle section here. Just gonna hold it on the top because we haven't really locked it in yet. And we're gonna blend these two together. And you can feel it making these crisscross strokes, right? That's gonna blend both of those yellows together going to give us a nice bright area to work with in the middle. And then once we go into our colors, we don't want to go too far down into our lights or it's going to make these much darker. Okay, so for that, you can see what I'm doing here. Just kind of lightly pulling down into our, our yellow area, right? So for this side, maybe we'll go this way. And that's just going to blend the lines between our red and our yellow. Okay, so now it's very difficult to kind of tell where it starts and where it stops. All right, blend it down here. Same thing up into our yellow on both sides. You can use crisscross strokes if you want. You can go one way, you can go the other way. Totally up to you. And then we're gonna come up into our dark. And now this is where that buffer of red comes in, right? You don't wanna come down and touch your yellows with this purple. Otherwise it's gonna go real dark real fast. Okay, buffer of red. Kinda mix those reds and purples together. did it with his two inch brush. Okay, I'm going to do it with the one inch brush. And what you can do is kind of pull down and make this kind of chiseled edge where it's almost like a fan brush, right? Pull it down, pull it down, and you get this knife-like edge, okay? Now we're going to come in from our clouds, right? Maybe there's a cloud over here. It's a nice little soft cloud off into the distance. And it makes a difference if you've got that nice chiseled edge to work with versus your full, you know, fat edge of your, of your knife. Your clouds will be much bigger. Sort of like mine were in the last painting. Because I didn't chisel my edge down, okay? Now maybe there's some up here. Kind of coming off. Maybe they trail off, right? And then we got this guy lives out here. Maybe he just, he comes, oh, he's a big guy. He just comes all the way out there, right? Leaving edges of the yellow and the red in between. Okay, and we've got another one coming in here just a little bit. Shoot, you can put them wherever you want. You come up here. Why don't we come down? Maybe there's another guy that lives in there, right? I want to make it different than Bob's. Don't want to make it the exact same, okay? Now, you can either use your two inch brush or you can wash your one inch brush. I'm gonna wash it now just to get it out of the way and have it clean for when we need to use it again. Okay, to wash our brushes, we have our gently used cups of Jasco brush cleaner, okay? It's sort of stinky compared to the low odor mineral spirits. So luckily, you know, it smells like money to me because, <laughs> uh, you know, they sell the paintings and stuff. 
but uh, some of the times the family doesn't like it being so stinky, so we got to open up windows and stuff. You can get odorless paint thinner, uh, sorry, odorless mineral spirits or odorless paint thinner if you can find it. Or I've seen some people use like Dawn dishwashing liquid, which makes sense because they clean up oil spills, you know, oil paint, oil spills, when they do the little duckies and they wash them with the Dawn, right? I don't know how well it works because I've never tried it before. I just stick with the brush cleaner. Uh, it seems to get them cleaner than the low odor mineral spirits. I need to use less than uh, the mineral spirits, it seems like to me. But I'm going to stop rambling on because we ramble too much. Okay. And then we're going to take our one inch brush that we just cleaned off, right? We're going to come in and just, just kind of make these little circles, right? Just little circles. And the more little circles you make, the softer your clouds are going to become until you literally will just blend them away into nothing. They'll just disappear. Okay, so we're just going to sort of stick to the bottom edge of those if you can. You can leave the tops, a little swipe up action, and just kind of make the tops of those clouds a little fluffy. And then depending on how much pressure you're using, these will disappear very fast. We didn't use a whole lot of paint in order to create these little clouds, okay? And we're not going to highlight these clouds with anything. They're just these soft, little far-off clouds that are going to live behind our mountain, right? We're just going to mix them up, mix them up. Cover over the edge, take a step back. Always take a step back. If you're up real close, you can't really tell what it's going to look like, right? I can look back in the camera and see that it's looking pretty fantastic right now. But I always want to take a step back. Now we've got these different layers of clouds kind of floating in front of each other, behind each other. Take our one inch brush, swipe them up with a little bit of force, right? Because there's not a lot of, there's no white paint on top of these, so you don't have the chance of smearing, right? Then we can just take it back and forth very lightly. Now that we're done with the top, we can lock our canvas in. Very light, like a whisper, whisper across the top. Heavier down here. You can hear it, right? Eventually, you'll be able to paint with your eyes closed. You can hear it moving just by the sound of the brush, okay? So now we got our far off clouds. They're looking pretty good. Gonna knock some of this paint off of this brush. Told you about the brush cleaner. Didn't tell you about our little fancy beater bucket, right? I've got a golf ball basket down the bottom. You could put a rod right through there, and that way you've got something to beat the devil in this brush. Beat the devil out of it. Okay, now we're going to make our mountain color, right? So we're going to use some uh, Lizard Crimson, Midnight Black, Prussian Blue. I'm going to throw some of that Van Dyke Brown in there, just kind of change the color up. I'm going to scrape her up. I'm trying to show you guys this. Half the time I've got it down here, and I've got a double chin, and you guys are like, oh my god, Josh is gaining tons of weight. I know, right? It's a daily battle. It's a daily battle not to have that cookie or little cream puff ball, too many goddamn sodas, right? Daily battle. Okay, we're gonna take and mix a little bit of our white in with this, just so we can see the color of it. I'm not gonna use the whole pile, right? I wanna leave a bit of that darker color for our mountain that's gonna go below. We're gonna mix her up nice and dark. And then we're gonna come in, grab our little roll of paint, and just decide where the mountain lives on this sucker. Right? He's gonna come up over here. He's got another little guy. Gonna go off to the side. And then shoot, there's a whole nother little bit of a mountain. You can see how I'm, I'm holding it flat to the can. It's just kind of mushing it in, right? We're not trying to get it to break right here. Just kind of mushing it in, making it making the color kind of stick on there. Okay? And we're going to come down. Maybe there's another little hump. All right. There's a bigger hump over here. And try not to make your mountains pointy every single time, right? They don't have to look like a, like a pyramid. It's not necessary. I'm going to add a little hump right here because we had a happy little accident. Had the knife come up out of the, out of the, uh, line of our mountain because we're only worried about what the top line looks like, right? We're not worried about what it looks like down here. This makes no difference, right? It's just about what the top edge looks like. 
and go back in and scrape off all this extra paint because we don't want it to be too thick. I've got a whole other line where I could make a whole other mountain if I wanted to. Right, scrape it off. That way it'll be easier to put your mountain, your you know, snow color and everything on. I'm going to take our one inch brush because it's easier for me. I'm just going to slide and pull this sucker out. Right? Just going to grab it and pull it, being mindful of what the top edge looks like. And as you're doing this, you're kind of laying out how your mountain looks. You know what I mean? Your, your dark areas, your light area, you're kind of laying it all out as you're mixing like this. All right, so maybe this guy comes down and he comes down over here. And I got this little, little valley in between the two of them. You can see the dark areas and the light areas. All right, maybe over here, come down, go off to the side, and bam, just like that. Depending on how hard you push, you could drag this sucker and make it real big, okay? So just keep it nice and light and small. That's why we scraped off all that extra paint so our mountain doesn't grow too far down, okay? We'll wash this brush so we can use it again. Okie dokie, Smokies. Now in a separate little pile, we're going to create our little shadow color with the Prussian blue, some of the white. We'll put it over here for right now. I, I like to do my shadows first, and then you can play with your highlights more, it seems. If you put all your white snow on, then it makes it more difficult to go in and just make these little shadows, all right? So let's say all of our light is coming over from this side, so we'll just put a few little shadows in in the places where we think the shadows belong. I mean, there's some off of this side, and it goes this way, comes down, so we'll have those white in between there. Maybe that guy's in white, so all over here, I can just put that blue color, right, and kind of create how you want the, the white snow to look in your mind, right? Come down, maybe he comes around this way. Or he's off to the side over here, we got this little ridge. Right, this side, bam, bam. A little bit of blue snow. And we're holding it, you know, we're holding the knife at the same angle of our canvas. I use three fingers and then I put my pinky on the end, right? Pinky on the end, three fingers, thumb on the bottom. That way it's very light where you can almost drop the sucker, okay? You don't want to be fisting it like this and just argh, scraping through, right? Very light. Very light. Maybe it comes around over there. Who knows? Figure it out, okay? Then we're going to use our gray, and Bob put a little bit of uh, white, and Bob put a little bit of black in with his to sort of make his snow gray. Right? And you always need more than you think when you're doing this snow because it can get real thick. Okay, so now we've got this nice kind of grayish, whitish color. You can tell the difference between the actual white up here, which you can't even see on my palette. And now we'll come in and we'll get our little roll of paint just like Bob does, and just very lightly and sort of quickly pull it away. I right, want to be quick with it to get it to kind of break like that if you're holding it on the right sort of angle, all right? There's a bit of it in there. In these mountains, the, the snow is a little grayer because it's a little further away in our mind, right? I'm going to make a whole other mountain come in like that right over, right over. And we didn't over mix the color, right? So you have different, you know, there's bits of darker and bits of lighter. You can throw some more white in there if you wanted to. All right? We're not over mixing, we're leaving it sort of marbled. Right? Take it like that and just sort of bounce your hand like this. Just bounce it down. Pop, 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 pop. Bouncy, 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 pull it to the side. Bit too much black in there for me. Pull it down, pull it down. Pull it down. Bam. You don't want to go over it too many times because you're going to cover up all these cool little breaks, okay? And that's not what you want. Maybe there's a little bit on the mountain top up here. And you don't want it to be a straight line either. We'll pull a little bit off to the side. Just kind of mix it in with that shadowy color so it looks like there's a you know a little bit of lighter snow, a little bit of darker snow. Main thing is you don't want to overdo it by you know, doing too much, right? Or going over it too many times. Let's see what it looks like in the camera. 
Ooh, it looks good. You might want to step back and look at it every so often, right? You can take your mountainy dark color, the same color we made the mountain with, right? And just really darken up some of those shadows where the light's just having a, such a hard time reaching all the way over here that, you know, you get these dark crevices, right? Maybe behind this sucker. And this is what I'm talking about. If you do your, all your white snow first, or your gray snow in this instance, then you gotta come back in and have this super fine touch to create these dark little crevices back there with your darker paint, right? Or with your shadows. So when you're learning, start with the, the shadows first, because you can always go over a shadow and brighten it up and make it, you know, lighter with your with your highlight snow, right? This guy, we don't want him on such a straight line. Okay, now all these little black bits, you can even put them Put them in here where your darkest areas are. They look like rocks sticking up out of the snow that didn't get covered or, you know, real deep crevices, right? And that's, that's all you need. You don't need to do much more than that, but you don't want to overdo it. It starts looking really cool with the black or your dark purple, whatever color you made your mountain. You, you could use black or blue or whatever, it doesn't matter. But it starts looking really neat, but don't overdo it because you want those differences. You want the blacks and the blues and the grays and the white. You want to, when someone's looking at it, for the details and they're like, it's pretty sweet because you got all these different colors in there, right? Okay, now what we're going to do with the two-inch brush is kind of create that fog just very lightly in the angles that we laid our snow down, right? You can see my brush rotate like so, right? So we're rotating out flat. It's slow motion, right? And that gives us this fog at the bottom. Now this way, we're going to come this way. Rotate out flat. Right? Gives us this foggy look down at the bottom. You can even take it and make, you know, little foggy shapes out of it. Bam, 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 just like that. We got this mountain kind of floating in the middle of nothing, right? Want to leave some of this yellow underneath for our reflections in our snow. Okay, now going to make, make this bottom mountain a lot darker, okay? So we didn't, remember how we mixed some of the white in with our mountain paint to make it lighter, to make it this lighter color? Now we're going to come in with a darker color to make our other mountain, right? Which maybe lives over here. Now it's going to look like these two mountains are, are sort of connected almost. Right. Again, just want to be the top edge is all we're worried about. And underneath, scrape off a bit of that. <clears throat> Come back in with our one inch brush again. Just kind of pull it to the side, okay? You can see we've kind of left this yellowish fog in between the two mountains. It's kind of being lit up by the by the sun light, you know what I mean? And we're gonna come down here. Maybe this guy goes off this way. Now you can see we've got this little mini mountain in front of our larger mountain, okay? I'll blend those up. Again, we've saved a bit of our yellow, right? There's yellow water back here, or, you know, fog. And we've got our water line underneath here. Take that guy off to the side. And we didn't want to, you know, use blending so much that we kind of get rid of all this color underneath, right? You want to have some of that reflection in the water. So again, we're going to take our white and blue snowy mixture, and we're going to put it underneath where we think our shadows would be. Right, and then this time, why don't we take some of that dark mixture and we'll just kind of put it in right away instead of having to go back. Right, not covering it all, leaving some of that blue. Might have put it a bit too thick on right there. Leaving some of that blue that we put down initially, but these ones the sun's even trying harder to reach, okay? So we have these, these real dark crevices, all right? And we're gonna take our snow, 
just kind of throw it out to the side. Ba bam! All right, now we got these hills. They're kind of covered in this light snow color. And it's going out to the horizon, right? You can even take it, and you're like, ooh, this would look cool if there was a little bit of a, you know, maybe those connect in there. Totally up to you how you want to make it look. That's the best part about painting to me. You make it look however you want it to look. If you're like, oh, it's not bright enough, change it. You want to connect those little lines. Connect them. Do whatever it is you want to do. Maybe the, maybe the line comes over here. Right? Wherever the sun is hitting in your mind, that's where you put your other bit of highlight. Now we've got our two different mountains looking really good. Again, we're going to come in, just very lightly tap in the angle that we put this snow on, right? And that's just going to create this fogginess underneath. Right? You can kind of pull up, give it this kind of foggy look in the same way that we put it on. You can come back in and do your little circles like I do, or taps like Bob does. And then bam, now we've got these two different mountains that are kind of chilling out there. Just floating. For right now, they're just floating up in the sky. Okay, now we're going to come back in. Back into that kind of darkish color. All right, chisel our brush down again. So wiggle it down so you get this real fine sort of knife-like shape, okay? And then we're going to come in with our little footy hills. Again, just touching very lightly. We don't need a whole lot of you know, paint or anything on this sucker. Just very lightly touching. And come in, take our brush, just kind of flip upwards, just straight up, and give these effect of these far off trees, okay? Kind of fog up the bottom a bit. in our water way back when we're going to have more of it up here in the front, okay? We're going to come back in, our little footy hills, as Bob calls them, little footy hills. And we're going to go over, maybe we'll stay into that little mist that we made, and then come out not too far, just about right there. It's going to give us an idea on how far our water line needs to be. It doesn't have to connect. And you can even take it if you're like, Josh, I, I put too much water line, right? Take your brush just very lightly, straight as you can get it, pull it and blend it away, okay? The, that liquid white will literally disappear if you blend it enough. All right? Maybe this guy's a little bit taller. And we'll come back with our two-inch brush. This little swipe up. It's going to give us the effect of these far off trees, okay? And then we come in, and just kind of fog it up around the bottom. Come back. All I did to get the liquid knife on the uh, the liquid white on the knife is just tap into it. I didn't scoop any, didn't do anything. Okay, and we're going to come back in and cut in our water line again. You can see how I've switched gone down a little bit, right? Because this is coming towards us. So you want these different levels, right? It's further away. It's coming towards us. Yes. Just irritating me back here. Just blend it away. Right, take our last bit, last little footy heel. Again, get our our two inch, our one inch brush nice and chiseled down. And then who knows? Maybe we'll come in. But this little sucker here, I think it just comes out a little bit further. Right? Bam. A little some fog, something to make the fog out of down here. Right? You can even take this guy, pull him down in the front. 
Now we got these reflections, right? Take our clean brush, swipe to the side. Bam, now you got these reflections of your little foothill down into your water, okay? Again, I just touched it into the liquid white. And then we're gonna come back in and just, you know, be kind of rough with it. Push in. Push in and cut it in there. That's why it's called a knife, because you gotta cut it in. You wanna be as straight as possible. It doesn't have to look the same across the whole thing, right? You just want it to be a little bit straight. All it is is kind of breaking up in between those two bits of, of shadow back there. Just breaking it up. Right? We don't even know if that water line back there, if you don't like it, just get rid of it. Right? This one may be a little bit too much. So just swipe it very lightly. The sucker will disappear. It's the best part about that liquid white is it will literally blend away to nothing, okay? So now we got that, we got our little foothills, make our little trees on the top of this guy. Just being very gentle. Right? Looks amazing. I'm gonna wash off this brush. Maybe, just maybe. I'm gonna take our darkest green, right? Your sap green. Maybe on the back of this guy, we just got a little bit of color back here. Not a lot. Don't want them to stand out too much. Just want to have a little bit of color back there. Okay. As far as this guy, he's a little bit too far to, to see anything. But for this guy up here, we want to have a little bit of that color. And we can even take the, the brighter green. A little bit more color on this guy up here. Take them all the way out to the edge. Now you can see a lot more color, a lot more green in this front guy than you can the back guy, okay? Wash it off again. Gonna clear up that mess that we made with those colors. Keep them nice and, and bright. <clears throat> it's looking pretty good, guys. It's looking sort of similar to what Bob did, right? And what my last painting looked like. Pretty stinking similar. A couple little hard lines in there I didn't want. Just kind of fog those up. You gotta be brave if you're gonna go back. You can always do you can always mess up down the bottom, right? Because you can cover it. But once you're down here and you go back up, you gotta be brave. Be brave. Because if you make a mistake, a happy little accident, right? You gotta change the shape of everything else to cover over that. Okay, now we're going to come in and make some more of our our dark, our darkest mountain color to make these trees out of, okay? So, I need a fair amount of paint to do that. Bob, you know, he uses these gigantic piles of paint. And he does it like that, so everything is real dark. I'm talking about a, a ginormous amount for this little palette that I have right here. But you want them to be really dark and really thick, okay? We're going to take our, our little fan brush, kind of wiggle it down again. And then we're going to come in and make some trees, make some shadows of some trees, okay? They have to be taller than the mountain <clears throat> in order to be closest up to us, okay? So think about that when you're doing it. Come down. And then we're going to do our upward facing trees because I like the upward ones versus those saggy downward trees, right? And what you do for that is you just start using the corner of the brush. Right? This side I haven't even touched yet. But the further and further we get down, the more bristles on your brush that you'll use, okay? And again, you want it to be thick. And that way you get these hard, nice thick lines, thick goopy trees, right? Nice thick goopy trees down here. 
Don't worry about going over anything. We know it's back there, right? We know we, what we put back there. That's why you don't want to span side to side on a lot of things. Your paint will be too thick, okay? Put another guy over here, little friend. Again, we're going to go in this upward motion with our thick, goopy branches, right? Finish around the sides. This is just for the buyer over here. You want to see what's on the side? Buy the painting. Speaking of which, Etsy.com, where am I? Etsy.com slash shop slash happy landscape art, okay? Of course, subscribe right down here. Follow me on Facebook at happy landscape art. Follow me on Instagram at happy little landscapes, okay? Let's see, I always forget to kind of show you guys what I'm doing over here. I have a gigantic pile of paint that I thought was going to be good for you know, the rest of the painting. No, it's only for these three trees on this side. All right, and let's do one over here. Kind of down on an angle. Again, we're coming at it from the side, touching up, creating these real thick, goopy trees. All right, you want to be able to see these trees from the side of the canvas. When you look at it, you want it to be nice and thick and textured, okay? that down there and we might be able to get one tree on this other side out of this pile of paint before we have to make some more okay maybe these guys are a little bit further away than those guys so maybe they're not as tall come down like that not every tree has to look the same either you do not have to be the same width or look or anything they don't even have to you know be symmetrical on each side you could do them however you want Just by flattening out, look at how much of that paint that we got. Just a big glob. So we can go back in, suck some of that up into here and make some more. Right, here's a guy over this side. Again, nice big thick chunks of paint. You want it to be thick. We're going to have to make up some more here. some of that Van Dyke brown in there. Shoot, you can throw some of the sap green in there. It don't matter. Nice big thick chunks. And we'll use the rest of this shadow and stuff for you know our bushes and things. So if you make too much, don't worry about it. Oh yeah, nice and thick in there. Alright, maybe this guy is back here. Again, you want it to be super textured and thick and goopy. And if you finish around the sides, that's going to cause someone to be, they're going to be walking down your hallway, they're going to see all this thick paint sticking off of this canvas and go, well, what is that? And it's going to, want to, it's going to want to turn around and see it. Okay, I think we're done with this fan brush here. Nice thick, get all these little textured areas right on, right onto your canvas so it's real thick. And that way our, our highlight paint will have something to stick to, okay? I'm going to take the tip tops of our trunks up here and just push in and go up. And that's going to give you these real sharp tip tops of your trees. Like so, like so, like so. Now we'll take some of that white. I'm surprised we, we may not even need any more white. And the Van Dyke brown, okay, we're going to make the tree trunk color. You can throw some of that black in there. You want them a little bit darker because we're in the shadow, right? All the lights over there, we're not going to see a whole lot of these trunks. We'll take a little bit and we'll come in. And just, I mean, they can stick off the canvas too, ever so lightly. And not all in the same areas, right? Never going to see the whole trunk of the tree all in the same spots along it. And you don't want to go from top to bottom, otherwise you got to cover it all. Okay, like that. Come over here, a little bit, a little bit, a little bit in between. You can see how I've, if I've left a space here, then I'll put that next trunk. If I left a space here, I'll put it. So you're kind of 
crisscrossing back, back and forth, back and forth. A little bit at the top, a little bit in the middle. Who knows? You can, maybe you can't even see much of that guy. A little bit thicker down around the bottom. Some of that yellow ochre since we're not going to use much of it anymore. Right? Just add it in just every so often with our tree trunks. Our brown wasn't quite brown enough. It looks gray to me. So we're going to just add a little bit of that yellow ochre. Just kind of mix it in with our trunks. Ooh, that's bright. Ooh, Nelly. You may not, you may cover all the trunks, okay? But you want to have them in there just in case. And we're going to take this, throw it on the edge of our lip of our easel over here so we can really get down and get crazy with these things, all right? Wash this brush off real quick. You can tell this is my tree making brush because even when I wash it, it still comes out a little bit dark. for these bushes down around the bottom, okay? We're going to come through, we're going to swipe through in one direction with our our one inch brush like this, right? Really load up the brush in this one direction so it's nice and goopy. And then we can come in and just push upwards, right? And get these cool little, look, fell off there. These cool little shapes out here. Turn it back over, again, push up. And you can even kind of reflect some of those down into the water, okay? Like so the rest of these are all going to be all dark shadows anyway. Dark shadows of our trees, right? And we can take our clean brush this is how we can make the, you know, the, the lay of our land, right? Pull it down, swipe to the side very gently, okay? Pull it down, swipe to the side. And that's just going to kind of foggy up those uh, reflections. Not much that I need to do left. This thing just keeps irritating me. really going to push down hard on it this time. There we go. All right, that's looking good. It's looking good. I'm going to take a liquid white on our little small fan brush. You can use the same size fan brush you were using before. Totally up to you. We're just going to kind of mix these greens in together. That way we'll have all these different color greens on our little little mini fan brush here. Got too much liquid white there. All right, and we'll come in. Maybe these guys are more in the sunlight, and we'll just go down every so often, popping in a couple branches. And get about halfway down the tree and stop. Okay. And this side, I'm gonna switch. I'm gonna come over here. Just stay on your branches that you made. This is where we give the shape to our tree, okay? Again, come down about halfway, stop. Come back in. Each time you come back in here, it's going to dull these colors to a, a darker color green because we're touching against this black, blackish looking paint, right? So again, come in just very lightly though. You don't want to don't want to smush all those little cool textured bits that we laid on in the beginning, right? Again, come about halfway down, stop. Our big bushes are going to come up the other half. Now, I don't want to have all this dark paint when I go to do the beginnings of our next ones. I'm going to get a little bit more liquid white. Come back in, do the same thing. Get all these greens onto both sides. Okay, don't need it 
all the way up the brush. Put them on the both sides, come over again. Again, just start staying on your branches. Come about halfway down. Don't need to go all the way down. Don't want to cover up all of your shadows either. You want the trees to still look a little dark. Come back in. It's going to dull the paint a little bit. This guy up here. Come down. Kind of flip the brush around if you start losing paint. Again, you don't need to do a lot. It only come about halfway down. It's like a fifth time I've said this. Okay? For this last one, I want it to be darker. So we can take a little bit of that dark color. Because this is in the shadow of everything else, right? So it can be a little bit darker. Again, about halfway down. Don't need to go the rest of the way. Finish it on the edges for the buyer. They're the only ones that are going to see it. So if you want to see what it looks like, buy it. Etsy.com slash shop slash happy landscape art. Okay? That'll over. Subscribe right here on YouTube. You create these beautiful scenes. You can do it. I can do it. You can do it. It's easy. Okay. Before we clean off this brush, we need to make our, since we're going to finish the sides, right? To make our bushes down here a bit bigger. This guy comes more at like an angle. Again, we can just swipe it down, come to the side very lightly. <clears throat> Now we need something for, you know, all this to sit on, otherwise it's just going to fall fall into nothing, right? It's got to have some land to sit on. I'm going to mix up some of that. Since I don't have much brown left, I'm going to mix up the crimson and the green, and that'll turn into this beautiful reddish-brownish color. You really want to mix it up good, though. Okay, take our little roll of paint. Remember, be mindful of your angles. Oh, look at that dark brown. Oh, that is a sweet color right there. That is a beauty. Beautiful little color. It's like mahogany-ish. It's nice. Finish the edges for our buyer. Right this side, we're going to come down again. Man, that's a pretty, pretty brown. Just like we're putting snow on the mountains, so it's going to break. It's going to have, you know, this darker color underneath. If you pull out too far, don't worry, okay? Don't trip. Now, let's take a bit of that same brown and we'll mix it with some white. Maybe we need a bit more green. Now we'll get this lighter colored brownish. Right, this side's going to be in the sun, so it can be a little bit brighter. Pull it out. Just like so. And this side, we're going to mix in a little bit with that dark color. Because this side's in the shade. Right, so you can tell the differences in between the two browns. Especially with this dark color on there. Okay, now we're going to come back, since this thing's starting to irritate me again, this little lip. Push her down, hold her down, looking good on the camera. We're going to come back in, and I'm going to put, I did it with the last one, it looked really neat. So I'm going to put a little bit of pink with this liquid white. Kind of scrape it up, and come in here and just kind of create where our land lives. Holding it very tight to the canvas, right? Very tight, and that way it deposits this little line of thicker liquid white. And that's like our little water kind of crashing up, crashing up next to it. Don't worry, if you take some of that off, go back in, make your land bigger again. Sometimes looks cool as well as if you put a bit of dark line in there with your with your water line. Shoot, you can even have this side over here like a little cliff. Right? Now we got these 
differences in elevation over here. Come back in, drop our water line in. Nice and easy. Easy peasy. Lemon squeezy. Right? You want it to look messy though. You don't need it to look perfect. Come out every so often. Like that. Don't need it to look perfect, right? It's just gotta be there. Do whatever you want to do. And we'll add some red to this side since it's more in the shadow, right? Want to be a little bit darker. Again, come in. Before we do that, let's throw some dark on this side too. Or for me to see with this bit. Just throw our water line like it's just bouncing in. Right? Be straight with it. Pull it out. Even throw a little ripple in places where you want. Right? A little ripple in the water. If you're like, oh, I don't like that, it's too big or whatever. Swipe it over, get rid of it. Come back in. Just a little cut. Little cut a line like that. That is looking fantastic, you guys. Alright, we're going to clean off our one inch brush again. We'll be doing a lot of cleaning in this last bit that I'll cut out so you guys don't have to watch it all as we pop in our different colored bushes, okay? We're going to have some taller ones over here. Maybe there's a row in the back and then there's a row in the bottom. Maybe this one it's all on its own. Maybe there's a big one back here, another small one over here, okay? So we're going to decide where they live and which colors we want. All right? I'm going to come back in. I chose the pink for right here. I'm just going to pop in a little bush. It doesn't need to cover all the shadows. You don't want it to. Okay, a little bit of liquid white. Again, pull down in the same direction. Tap it down. And you got these bits, right? Ooh, a little fiery little red bush over there. And we got a bit of this yellow ochre bush that comes up. Again, you don't want to cover everything, so don't go down to the bottom. Don't cover up all of your darks, okay? That gives us depth. This guy's just catching a whole bunch of sunlight out here, so get this big old green sucker. There you go. Looking a little bit too flat top to me. Damn. Just by literally just by touching it. You don't have to push it in hard, you don't have to do anything, you just gotta touch it. This thing's getting too muddied up now. critters to live, right? Little critters live back in here. You scrape through that paint real tough. Tough with it. Scrape it away. Make these little sticks like that. Alright, come over here. Scrape up some that are holding up these bush. Alright, maybe we drop another one down in there. Sticks. Wash the sucker off again. 
guys can see this area over here. It's like a beautiful, it's like a Van Gogh. All these colors everywhere. Okay, now we gotta fill in our last little bit. So again, we go into the liquid white. Might not be showing you guys this, right? Into the, the goopy liquid white. And we're gonna pick one of our colors. We're just gonna go through it, kind of bounce it down. You can see how it leaves this textured bit on my palette. That's what we want on the canvas, okay? Then we're gonna come back up and just pop up, but we're not gonna cover everything. Then we're gonna switch, get rid of that color just by wiping it off on a paper towel. Come back in, maybe we'll do the red this time. Oh, I almost forgot about the purple. Guys, come in and we'll get this red bush like that. Again, we haven't covered the bottom. Come up into this beautiful purpley, lavendery color, okay? And why not I'll make this big purple sucker over here? All right, we've got spaces in between. I haven't covered everything. You can see the difference. This one in the front is almost too pink. So we'll make him a little bit purple too. There we go. Scrape some sticks into him. Got our water line. you've done it, you don't want to mess with it too much, okay? And shoot, our very last one down here in the corner. Let's just go into that Indian yellow. He's feeling left out. The only guy used for the sky. So we'll use him down here. Just like that. Guys, that turned out better than the first one, if you ask me. There we go. Now, this stuff down here is super wet and liquidy, right? So you don't want to mess with it too much. Like I just went over and added that little bit. You don't want to go back and add too many or it will mud up, mix with all the dark underneath because these top layers are so lightly, they're so wet with that liquid white that you can't mess with them too much, okay? don't want to mess with them too much because they will go muddy and you'll miss, get rid of everything. All right, we'll scrape in a couple of our little sticks holding these purple ones up. Maybe a couple guys back here, a little bit over there. Maybe that guy's got one that just shoots right up out of him. Okay, got our water line. Back in here, it's all different colors. Got the red, got the dark. Put some white right along the edge, right? Totally up to you. What do I always say? Play with it until you like it, okay? And then it's done. And I'm really, really proud of this one. This one turned out really good. So you know what we're gonna do? Most of the time, I don't put this bit in the video because it's very personal to me, okay? We're going to load up our fan brush. We're going to put our family of birds in there. If you don't have a yardstick, get a yardstick. You can see how mine's all paint covered because we go up like this or you can touch it on the canvas itself or over here, wherever you want to make your birds, right? And then it gives you a place to rest on so you're not trying to float over your canvas and you've got everything done and now you go to sign it and you just screw it all up, right? So we're just going to float over here just very lightly, I put these three birds into nearly every single painting. Me, my wife, my daughter, right? Just a little touch of personality. And right here, down around the bottom, we're going to sign this sucker. Just like that, guys. Got a completed painting. Took us about an hour and two minutes. I'm going to shorten it just a little bit with the editing. But this thing turned out fan freaking tastic, okay? Something about this water line is just pissing me off. So, again, we got to play with it until we like it. 
bit of color in there, maybe. Bam, guys, knocked it out. It's so good. It's so good. But you can see where how thick our water lines are up here. That's why you want these ones off in the distance very faint because they'll, you know, if they're very thick back there, it will bring those a lot closer than we want to be. We want to be way far off in the distance. So there's nothing, not a single thing I would change about this painting. So maybe just a little bit of brightness. Right around there. Now I've got a mountain of brushes I need to go clean. So you guys have a look at this sucker. And we did it just like Bob's. Hard to see. He used a lot of greens and, and yellows in his ones down here. Watch this, we're gonna see if we can get it close. Why am I having so much, such a hard time, ready? Like this, and then bow! Same thing, same. Except I've got different colors. I've got pinks and purples, reds all down around the bottom of mine. Okay, so I enjoyed, I really, really enjoyed painting this one today. I hope you guys try it with me. The secret is, use a lot of paint, like really goopy, thick, lots of paint in the right areas, right? Very thin up in the sky, sort of goopy on the mountains, very, very textured on the trees, okay? That's how you get this highlight color to stick and look perfect, all right? You want them super thick, and the thicker the better on your trees, okay? And the darker the better. You want them real dark so that your highlights can bounce off of those dark colors. So once again, I enjoy painting this one. I hope you guys did. I uh, hope you subscribe to my channel right down here. Subscribe. Uh, follow me on Facebook, facebook.com slash happy landscape art. Uh, you can go to my Instagram at happy little landscapes. And of course, go to my Etsy store, etsy.com slash shop slash happy landscape art. Okay? You can get the shirts. You can get the hats. You can get the paintings and the pillows. Look at this. Look at this beauty. A little seascape on a pillow. So soft. So soft. Right? I've got phone cases. I have poster prints. I've got these paddles. Uh, Hand-painted wooden objects. Little Christmas ornaments. All sorts of stuff for you to get. Uh, and it's free shipping over $35. Free domestic shipping anyway. So go hit my store. That way I'll be able to buy more canvases and bring you guys more paintings and more videos and we can sit here and paint every day, right? It's my dream. I can only reach so many people. I need you guys to reach the rest and bring them to the channel so we can paint all day long, right? It's my dream. I'm a full-time artist now. No job except for this and you. So you share it with your friends, get your friends, bring them in here, and uh, we'll just sit and paint all day long, right? Go to my store, follow me on Facebook, of course, subscribe, <laughs> subscribe to my channel, and uh, you guys take care. We'll see you on the next painting. Friday, Wednesday, Tuesday, whenever. You'll be yourself. Just do a tutorial on my face. Just make a mountain out of my face, right? Just throw my freaking palette knife on the ground. Knocked it out of the park with this one on a 16 by... Just like this. Shit. Okay. I'll change a couple of colors down around the bottom. And so, if you... Fuck. All right. I think that's enough fooling around for today. Not many bloopers, but, you know, what can you do?